welcome to my favourite thing in cycling, echelons. So here we go, first first step vid, first vid is Giro d'Italia 2017, stage 3. I believe you probably will have seen this before. So here we go, we got track on the front, you can see Bahrain Mahirida behind, got a bit of Kandau, got a bit of Lodo Sudal, got BMC on the left, you can see the pink journey pink jersey, Andre Greipel, got Garen Thomas there, uh, all sort of massing at the front. And here we go, four lads at the back have got spat already and they just have no chance, they'll just limp to the finish line. But anyway, here we go, ignore this part, no one cares about the poor AG2R. And look, here we go, Bob, Bob Young was on the right hand side, quick step, always do this, watch for the roundabouts, quick step, always smash on the roundabouts, that is their top tip. So whenever there's a roundabout and crosswinds, that's when quick step will come. Look, quick steps, all surge on the roundabout. All stringing out now because on the roundabout there's always natural compressions and people it's easy to lose your train quick step all come to the front and here they go quick step and out on the front four blokes and they're just absolutely driving it they're going so hard and if anyone loses the wheel that's get it's game over Greibel's sprinting as hard as he can to get across Nitzola knows it's the end Movistar bloke I think trying to protect Quintana knows it's near the end Bob Young was on the right hand side moving up Everyone knows Quick Step are on the front and they're absolutely smashing. This is probably five, six hundred watts up to sixty k's an hour. Probably they are like flying along. The wind's coming from the left hand side, so you can see they're all offering protection to the to the people on the left. Uh, so sorry, the wind must be coming yeah from the right hand side. So it means on your when you come up on the right, it's the hardest, and when you come up on the left, it's the easiest. But anyway, that was a good demonstration of how to do crosswinds. So here we go again. Panna, pretty quick, stage 2, 2017 again, you can see the wind's coming from the left hand side, Katusha are now on the front, and they're absolutely driving it, and you can see there's a split already, Gilbert's there, people are trying to come across, but you can already see it's quite late, uh, the people on the right hand side of the road, they are getting fully exposed, and the people who are slightly further up are getting a bit more shelter, because the wind's just coming across, and you can see people are trying to get across, but so if you're on the left-hand side of the road now, it's it's a lot easier than when you're on the right-hand side because you're really trying to pull it. But when you're in the gutter, which will be on the left-hand side, you can see some people at the back. They're getting no protection because the wind's going straight across. And the reason this is is that the main angle that is protecting you from the wind normally it's straight ahead because your angles are pretty like zero to ten degrees or whatever. But when there's mad crosswinds, they're coming across the 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 main place that's slowing you down is actually from the wind coming aside but unfortunately for them this didn't work as there was a slight change of direction but you can see what happens in crosswinds when someone gets to the front and absolutely drives it you have to be as strong as the person on the front because the winds because you're not getting any shelter from the side which is obviously different from normal normal if someone comes to the front and hits like starts smashing it you'll be able to just sit in their wheels like yeah you might have to accelerate up to their speed but as you can see again round a corner and they're going through some houses and if you watch crosswind stages you always see when there's a change of direction or when they come out of like a village or a town that is when it's the best time to hit the crosswinds you can see there's already gaps opening up Luke Durbridge managed to lose his GC aspirations on this on this day in particular because Basically, Quick Step, Katusha, and Trek just drive it. But look how strong out it is. And you can see if anyone drops the wheel in that whole thing, then that's game over. So you can see Trek are on the front again. I'm th not sure who that is, but you can see Gilbert in the white jersey leading the race. He's flying across. And the people on the right hand side, they're offering protection up to all the people. But if you're stuck in the line behind, you're getting no protection because the wind's coming straight across. So you can see in the group behind, the aqua blue man at the front, he's at the back, sorry, he's getting quite good protection because they're all echeloning. We know now, direct energy, Brian Cocker, I believe that is, and you've got some Bora lads, and they're all just, the reason they all circulate round is because if you don't circulate and you don't help, then basically you get stuck at the back. But look how fast they're going, they're going at least 50, 60 k's an hour, I'm not even joking, like the speed that these people go on the crosswinds, because normally often it's a cross tail and they are flying. So if you look now, the people trying to bridge across the gap, they're having a real hard thing. But if you're at the front, it's easier to be at the front and do your turn than just be stuck at the back trying to hold on because you're getting a lot less draft. So you can see the way they rotate is that that you when you come up, you're resting because the wind's coming from the right. So you're um you're in the draft because um so it means you're a bit fresh when you get 
to the front. Uh, and so here we go. Here's some another change of direction. You can see in these Belgian roads, there's just no there's no hedges or anything. It looks, looks so bare. And so it means that crosswinds can just go flying across these fields and they get very powerful and very strong. So again, change of direction, quick step on the front. These teams, they know exactly when to hit it. And you can see there are teams behind. I think that's, I don't know who that is actually. It might be, I guess it'll be Orica. Orica trying to pull it back at some point. And here, I believe, is the group up the road who are, I guess they know they're going to get caught, but they're a bit chilled at the moment. You can see when their echelon's been like established, it's a bit more chilled and everyone just rotates calmly. It's when there's that panic to it initially, like form the echelon. Like as you can see now, it's sort of the middle group, the front group has a like panic over. And here we go, Tour de France stage. 20 stage 2 2015 again another thing lotto on the front bmc fdj tony martin <laughs> i when you see those big names on the front so the wind's coming from the left hand side and you can see the people in the gutter on the right hand side of the screen they're struggling massively you can see peter sagan's there you can see i i think that's tony Gallopan on the front now just moving up Kwiatkowski's there they're all pulling as hard as they can to try and create a massive gap because they know that this road pretty much goes straight along the coast and the wind's going to be coming from the left hand side the whole time and you could see there's some sky hats in there there's a lot of people but all these people have just been spat they'll be trying to keep up maybe and then they'll just realize it's game over and for a lot of them like if they're not care if they don't care about gc and they're not sprinters it's just, like it doesn't really matter i mean like you don't really care um necessarily as much this could be Thibaut Pino having some troubles, I'm not sure why, I, I'm, the reason I'm guessing that is because they're zooming in some FDJ blokes, but you can see now there's a second echelon sort of formed and they all just circle through to try and to try and make it as easy as possible, but here you can see that's Michal Kwiatkowski, we've got some Astana blokes, Kwiatkowski in the rainbow jersey just done his turn, and you can see now they're sort of like not really doing a full echelon. Sagan's there. People are sort of like wondering. That's why you need a big team effort. You've got to get a lot of people up for working really, really hard because otherwise it just there's just not enough manpower to do it. Because in order to really hurt people, you need you need sort of big, big powerful riders on the front consistently really hitting it. So you can see this group, for instance, it's lack of cohesion and people are coming back together. So Katusha. I think that's Joaquin Rodriguez is coming back. Um, that might be Degenkolb. So this is quite old vid. I can't remember all the lads. But alas, we can still see that for the Tour de France, I mean, people really want to split this race up because there's a lot of incentive. If you're not the best sprinter and you manage to get get rid of someone who could uh, could be a world class sprinter, then it's uh, it's good. But you can see Quick Step. They want Cav t to be in the split. They want. Sagan's in the split. Sagan's normally quite good at crosswinds, and you can see now when Quickstep, Quickstep are really hitting it hard. Other people, it hasn't really created much havoc because the the camera angle is not great. But you can see there are groups sort of split all over the road. Um, like that's Pete Kenyuk there, in the British national champions jersey. Uh, he's been spat from the main group, but he might have done his work. But that's the thing with the crosswinds is that. When there's change direction, or you come out of village, and you see a couple te teams lining up, you know it's going to be chaos. But the other thing you have to remember, though, is that like you need a significant amount of people to help crosswinds, to help split a pack up in crosswinds. I'd say the other thing for the crosswinds is that often they work best when it's a tailwind, because it just means you're going so much faster, and that even if you have slightly less people, you can still survive. Because obviously in a headwind, if you've only got 20 people up front and there's a whole pelt on chasing behind, it's quite hard. Um, and some of the speeds, like in Qatar, they got up to 70 k's an hour. <laughs> just, you know, just 70 k's an hour on the flat, like spinning that 53.11 out like that. It's just insane. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you when you're watching a pro race or you're in a race. Uh, you know now what to look for in crosswinds and how to split up the peloton in